Japan, a country full of rich history and culture, has a past that's as vibrant as its neon-lit present. This is a land where ancient traditions seamlessly blend with cutting-edge innovation, telling a story that's as diverse as it is captivating. Today, we're setting the stage for an epic journey through time, delving into the top 10 pivotal periods of Japanese history. We'll kick off our exploration with the early Jomon period, known for its pottery, and journey through time all the way to post-war Japan, a period marked by remarkable recovery and global influence. Each era, each event, and each influential figure has woven a thread into the grand tapestry of Japan's identity. From the rise of the samurai to the impact of World War II, we've got a thrilling ride ahead. So buckle up, history enthusiasts, as we dive into the fascinating past of Japan. Our journey begins with the Jomon period, where the earliest signs of human life in Japan were found. This period stretching from around 14,000 to 300 BC was a time when Japan was still connected to the Asian mainland, and the first inhabitants were hunters and gatherers. The Jomon people, named after the cord markings found on their pottery, led a life that was in harmony with nature. These folks were no ordinary pottery makers, though. They crafted vessels with such intricate designs and patterns that they'd make your favorite ceramic artist green with envy. This pottery, some of the world's oldest, is a testament to the Jomon people's artistic flair and skill. Their lifestyle was not just about pottery and hunting though, they were also gathering wild plants, fishing, and even engaging in early forms of agriculture. The Jomon people weren't just surviving, they were thriving. They built pit dwellings and even had a sort of prehistoric version of a neighborhood watch with lookout towers to keep an eye out for any unwanted visitors. But the Jomon period was more than just pottery and pit dwellings. It was a time of cultural and societal development that laid the groundwork for the Japan we know today. The traditions, beliefs, and practices of the Jomon people continue to echo in Japanese culture, reminding us of the timeless connection between past and present. The Jomon period set the stage for the evolution of Japanese society, leading us to the Yayoi period. As we move into the Yayoi period, Japan sees a revolution in agriculture. This era, spanning from around 300 BC to 300 AD, marked a pivotal shift in Japanese society due to the introduction of rice cultivation. Now, imagine a time when hunting and gathering were the order of the day. Suddenly, a new method of food production comes into play, transforming the very fabric of society. That's what rice cultivation did. With this newfound skill, people were able to settle down, build communities, and grow their population. And it wasn't just about growing rice. The Yayoi period was also a time of technological advancement. The people of this era learned how to work with bronze and iron, leading to the creation of tools, weapons, and bell-shaped bronze vessels known as dotaku. These advancements further solidified the societal shift, encouraging larger communities and greater hierarchical organization. But it wasn't all work and no play. The Yayoi people also had a rich spiritual life. Archaeologists have found numerous clay figurines called dog, which are thought to have been used in religious rituals. These figurines, along with the vast burial mounds of this era, give us a glimpse into the spiritual beliefs and practices of the Yayoi people. The Yayoi period marked a significant transformation in Japan society, paving the way for the Asuka period, a revolution in agriculture, technological advancements, and spiritual development. The Yayoi period was indeed a transformative era in Japanese history. Next up, we enter the Asuka period, a time of spiritual awakening in Japan. This era, spanning from the late 6th to early 8th century, saw the introduction of Buddhism into Japanese society. 
marking a significant shift in cultural and religious practices. Buddhism was initially brought over from the Korean peninsula and its teachings quickly found favor among the ruling elite. The new faith offered a cosmological framework and ethical guidelines that resonated with many, leading to its rapid adoption. This wasn't merely a spiritual change. The introduction of Buddhism profoundly influenced Japanese society, shaping everything from art and architecture to politics and law. Temples began to dot the landscape, their ornate designs reflecting the intricate philosophies of this new faith. Buddhist sculptures and paintings flourished, creating a vibrant cultural scene. But Buddhism wasn't just about aesthetics and philosophy. It also played a pivotal role in the establishment of the imperial court. The Soga clan, one of the leading proponents of Buddhism, used their faith to consolidate power and establish a centralized government. This system of governance, inspired by the Chinese model, laid the groundwork for a more unified and structured society. As Buddhism ingrained itself into the fabric of Japanese life, it set the stage for the cultural blossoming of the subsequent Heian period. The Asuka period was a time of great change, leading to the Heian period. This was the dawn of a new era where religion, politics, and culture intertwined to form a unique and enduring identity. All with the Heian period, Japan's political landscape takes a dramatic turn. As the nation's capital shifted to Heian Kyo, modern day Kyoto, a new era of political intrigue, cultural refinement, and military might began to take shape. This era saw the emergence of the samurai, a class of warriors who would come to play a pivotal role in Japan's history. Originally tasked with protecting the aristocracy, these warriors gradually gained political power, setting the stage for centuries of samurai rule. Yet, it wasn't all about swords and battles. The Heian period was also a time of great cultural advancement. The imperial court, a hub of culture and refinement, played a significant role in shaping Japan's artistic landscape. Literature, poetry, music, and visual arts flourished, leaving us with many of the country's most cherished cultural treasures. Prominent among these is The Tale of Genji, often considered the world's first novel, penned by lady-in-waiting Murasaki Shikibu. This literary masterpiece offers a deep insight into the courtly life of the Heian period, filled with romance, political maneuvering, and the quintessential Japanese aesthetic of mono no aware, the transient beauty of things. As we look back at the Heian era, we see a time of cultural brilliance juxtaposed with the rise of military power. This delicate balance between the pen and the sword defined much of Japan's history. From the courtly elegance of the Heian period to the martial prowess of the samurai. The Heian period set the stage for the power struggles of the Kamakura period. The rise of the samurai and the influence of the imperial court had begun to shape the future of Japan in ways that still resonate today. Welcome to the Kamakura period, a time of warriors, shoguns, and feudal strife. In the late 12th century, Japan was swept into a new era, the Kamakura period, when the first shogunate was established. This was essentially a military dictatorship led by a shogun. The first of these shoguns was Minamoto no Yoritomo, who set up his power base in Kamakura away from the imperial court in Kyoto. Now let's talk about the feudal system. It was a hierarchical structure where land called fiefs was granted by the shogun to his most trusted samurai. These samurai in turn provided military service to the shogun, creating a network of loyalties. This system, while it did maintain a degree of order, also led to fragmentation and internal conflict as powerful clans vied for influence and control. 
The Kamakura period was also marked by external threats, notably the Mongol invasions. The Mongol Empire, under the leadership of Kublai Khan, attempted to invade Japan twice. However, they were thwarted both times, once by a typhoon and once by a storm, leading the Japanese to believe that they were protected by the divine wind, or kamikaze. The Kamakura period was a time of conflict and power shifts, leading to the tumultuous Sengoku period. This era laid the groundwork for the power dynamics and cultural developments that would shape Japan for centuries to come. Next up is the Sengoku period, aptly named the Age of Warring States. This era, spanning most of the 15th to the late 16th century, was a time of social upheaval, political intrigue, and nearly constant military conflict. Picture this. Local warlords known as daimyos battling it out for control of Japan's fractured territories. It was a game of power, strategy, and survival. Among the turmoil, however, emerged figures who would change the course of Japanese history. One such figure was Oda Nobunaga, a warlord who began the process of unifying the country. With a keen strategic mind and a ruthless approach, Nobunaga conquered many of the warring states, bringing them under his control. But Nobunaga's reign was cut short, leaving his work unfinished. It was up to his successors, Toyotomi Hideyoshi and then Tokugawa Ieyasu, to complete the task. Hideyoshi continued Nobunaga's work, and Ieyasu eventually established a stable shogunate, marking the end of the Warring States period and the beginning of a unified Japan. This unification, however, did not come without a cost. The constant warfare had taken a toll on the country. But as they say, it's always darkest before the dawn. The Sengoku period set the stage for a time of peace and isolation in the Edo period. Welcome to the Edo period, a time of peace, isolation, and cultural blossoming. Spanning from the 17th to the mid-19th century, this era saw the rise of the Tokugawa shogunate, a military government that established a long-lasting peace after centuries of civil war. The Tokugawa shogunate, under the leadership of Tokugawa Ieyasu, implemented a policy of isolation known as Sakoku, closing off Japan from most of the world. This policy was not simply a desire for isolation, but a strategic move to maintain the stability and power of the shogunate. But don't mistake this isolation for stagnation. Quite the opposite. Within the confines of its borders, Japan saw a flourishing of culture and arts. Traditional Japanese art forms like kabuki theater, ukiyo-e woodblock prints, and the tea ceremony grew in popularity becoming symbols of Japanese culture. Literature also thrived during the Edo period. The tale of Genji, often considered the world's first novel, was widely read. Haiku poetry, with its simple yet profound form, captured the spirit of the times. The Edo period was also significant for its social changes. The samurai class, while still respected, gradually lost its martial importance and transformed into a bureaucratic and administrative class. Despite its isolation, the Edo period was not a time of cultural decline, but rather a period of cultural growth and refinement, an era that set the stage for the transformative Meiji Restoration. On um, Next, we enter the Meiji era, a time of rapid modernization and westernization in Japan. In the mid-19th century, a revolution was brewing in Japan. This was the Meiji Restoration a political coup that restored imperial rule after centuries of shogunate control. But this wasn't just a political shift. It was the beginning of a complete societal transformation. In a bid to catch up with the industrialized West, the Meiji government undertook a massive modernization campaign. Railways were constructed, factories were built, and Western-style education was introduced. Japan was becoming a modern, industrial nation right before the world's eyes. 
But modernization wasn't the only change. Westernization was also sweeping through Japan. Western clothing became popular. European architecture dotted the cityscapes and Western ideas started to permeate Japanese society. The samurai class, once the backbone of Japanese society, was abolished, making way for a more egalitarian society. The Meiji era was a time of great change, but it was not without its challenges. Rapid industrialization brought about social and economic inequality and a clash between traditional Japanese values and Western ideas created tensions that would eventually lead to the devastating events of World War II. The Meiji Restoration propelled Japan into the modern era, leading to the devastating events of World War II. Diaphrase Chi. Now, we delve into one of the darkest periods of Japanese history, World War II. As the world became embroiled in conflict, Japan was not left untouched. The nation joined forces with Germany and Italy, forming the Axis powers. This alliance propelled Japan into the global conflict, leading to several military campaigns across the Pacific. But the war took a devastating turn for Japan in the summer of 1945. The United States dropped two atomic bombs on the cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The destruction was massive and the loss of life immense. In the wake of these bombings, Japan surrendered, marking the end of World War II. However, the end of the war did not mean an end to Japan's struggles. The country was left in ruins, its cities decimated, and its people in despair. But amidst the rubble, a glimmer of hope emerged. The subsequent American occupation brought about significant political and social changes. Democracy was introduced, and the emperor's power was significantly reduced. Japan's reconstruction was nothing short of miraculous. From the ashes of war, the nation rose like a phoenix, rebuilding its cities, reviving its economy, and re-establishing itself on the world stage. This period of reconstruction laid the foundation for Japan's future success, transforming it into the technological powerhouse we know today. World War II was a time of devastation, but it also marked the beginning of Japan's remarkable recovery. Finally, we arrive at post-war Japan, a period of astonishing economic growth and global influence. Rising from the ashes of World War II, Japan underwent a transformation that would see it become the second largest economy in the world by the end of the 20th century. This economic miracle, as it's often termed, was no stroke of luck. It was a result of strategic planning, hard work, and a relentless drive for innovation. Japan's technological advancements during this period were nothing short of extraordinary. It was during these years that Japan gave the world technological giants like Sony, Toyota, and Nintendo. These companies didn't just thrive locally, they set the pace globally, shaping industries and changing the way we live, work, and play. And Japan's influence didn't stop at technology. The nation also made significant strides in the arts, popular culture, and cuisine. Japanese anime and manga went mainstream, captivating audiences worldwide with their unique storytelling and artistry. Sushi, once a local delicacy, evolved into a global culinary phenomenon, savored from New York to Nairobi. In the world of fashion, Japan introduced a new aesthetic blending traditional elements with avant-garde concepts. Designers like Rei Kawakubo and Yoji Yamamoto redefined the global fashion landscape, influencing trends and styles around the world. Post-war Japan stands as a testament to the resilience and innovation of the Japanese people. It's a story of transformation and triumph, a journey from devastation to global dominance and it's a story that continues to unfold 
as Japan continues to influence the world in myriad ways. And there you have it, the top 10 things you need to know about Japanese history, from the earliest Jomon inhabitants through the samurai's rise to the economic powerhouse Japan is today. Each era, a unique thread in the rich tapestry that is Japan. Fascinated? There's a world of knowledge out there, waiting to be discovered. Remember, history isn't just about the past. It's about understanding how we got to where we are today. So, until next time, keep exploring.